Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. Today, our topic about the management of recurrent pregnancy loss. So, what we want to discuss today? The definition of recurrent pregnancy loss, the epidemiology, the types, etiology, investigations, and lastly, the management of recurrent pregnancy loss according to evidence-based evaluation and the guidelines, okay? First, let us start with the definition. Recurrent pregnancy loss is defined in United States different than United Kingdom. In the United States, it is defined as two or more consecutive failed clinical pregnancies documented by ultrasound or histopathology. So, two or more consecutive failed clinical pregnancies documented by what? Documented by ultrasound or histopathology. Not the biochemical pregnancy test detected the uh, pregnancy which is detected by pregnancy test. The, the definition to be fulfilled must include documented pregnancy by ultrasound or histopathology of the product of conception. Okay? While in the United Kingdom, the definition is different. It is defined as three or more consecutive yearly pregnancy losses But in United Kingdom, they include the biochemical pregnancy. I mean, the pregnancy diagnosed by pregnancy test. Okay? Maybe this is the cause of being three or more. So, the number of loss of pregnancy is higher, of course, if you consider the biochemical pregnancy test. Okay? So this is the difference between the USA and the United Kingdom as regards the definition of recurrent pregnancy loss. What about the epidemiology? 2% of pregnant women have two or more consecutive pregnancy losses. Up to 50% of patients with recurrent pregnancy loss have no clearly defined etiology. Okay, and you should know that recurrent pregnancy loss carry many complications, especially psychological one, distress, depression to the woman, and many abnormalities in behavior and social level. Okay, so this is you can consider recurrent pregnancy loss is a very big problem for any couple. What are the types of pregnancy loss, recurrent pregnancy loss? Maybe primary or secondary. If the woman has a previous live birth, so we consider it secondary. If she hasn't before any live birth, so it is called primary. Okay? What about the etiology? Chromosomal abnormalities is one of the most common causes. For example, aneuploidy, okay? Balanced reciprocal translocations in the fetus. Another cause is the anatomical uterine causes like congenital Mullerian tract anomalies like uterine septum, endocrine like diabetes mellitus, thyroid dysfunction, antiphospholipid antibody syndrome may account from 8 to 42 percent. So it is also an important cause 
as regards the recurrent pregnancy loss. What about the environmental factors? Yes, cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption, cocaine consumption, obesity, all these are factors related to recurrent pregnancy loss. What is the investigation may be needed? Assessment of medical problems like diabetes mellitus, thyroid dysfunction, by doing tests for blood glucose and the hemoglobin A1C, and for thyroid dysfunction, you can do TSH and thyroid antibodies and free T3 and T4. Karyotype assessment of the couples. Assessment of the uterine anomalies by using transvaginal sonography or saline infusion, sonostrography, or hysterosalpingography, or hysteroscopy, or even MRI if needed. What is important also is the investigation for antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, immunoglobulin G and M. Evaluation of the products of conception by using 24 chromosome microarray analysis. So this is the investigation in recurrent pregnancy loss. What are the recommended treatments? As regard chromosomal abnormalities, the recommendation about pre-implantation genetic testing for structural rearrangement with IVF for acquired thrombophilia you can give the patient either unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin plus low dose aspirin from 75 to 100 milligram this is for antiphospholipid syndrome and this is the commonest cause of acquired thrombophilia is the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome is there is any advantage for low molecular weight heparin over unfractionated heparin yes low molecular weight heparin can be given injection once daily and also has a superior safety profile for thrombocytopenia and osteopenia over unfractionated heparin. This is one of the side effects of unfractionated heparin is the thrombocytopenia and osteopenia. Okay? The possible side effects. Okay, what about the anatomical abnormalities? If we have congenital or or leomyoma. For leomyoma, surgical treatment is recommended. I mean myomectomy. Okay. What about if we have a uterine septum? The stereoscopic septal division can be done, but this this is offered on an individual basis. Okay, and by experienced gynecologist. What if there is infection? Although we consider infection as is not a cause of recurrent miscarriage and there is no investigation needed as regard infection except in symptomatic women. So, if a woman has a symptom of chlamydial infection, gonorrhea, or any other infection, bacteria vaginosis, so you can do the investigation to diagnose the, the, this infection, and you, you should treat, give treatment to this infection. Okay? So, antibiotic, if evidence of infection. What about the immunological? Inherited thrombophilia needs no treatment. 
Okay. So there is no recommendation as regard the immunological. Also, there is no evidence to give prednisolone, intravenous immunoglobulin, enterolipids, or partner lymphocyte transfusion. Okay, so don't do that. What about endocrinological cause like diabetes, thyroid dysfunction, either hypothyroidism or hypersyroidism? Hypothyroidism is more commoner as a cause of recurrent pregnancy loss. If proved, it would be treated either hypo or hypersyroidism. Okay, should be treated well. Also, treatment of diabetes and the control of blood glucose is an important factor. What about male factor? Lifestyle modification, like avoid smoking, avoid obesity, and excessive exercise. You should avoid them. We call it lifestyle modification, okay? You can give the husband antioxidant supplementation. Antioxidant supplementation, vitamins like vitamin A, C, D, and E, okay? What about if unexplained the current pregnancy loss? You can give progesterone, vaginal, micronized progesterone, 400 milligram twice daily, starting at the time of presentation with vaginal bleeding and to continue until 16 completed weeks of gestation. Okay. What about the general causes? The recommendation include maintenance of normal body mass index, stop smoking, limit, limiting alcohol and the caffeine intake, vitamin D supplementation, maintaining a healthy exercise and psychological support, also dedicated to the current pregnancy loss clinic because it is something important and affecting oh, some families hardly. So you should take this complaint of recurrent witness loss seriously, okay? And don't forget the psychotherapy because recurrent pregnancy loss associated with psychological stress. This is the end of my lecture, thank you. This is my link on Amazon and this is my link on YouTube to see my lecture. On Amazon you can see some sample of this box, textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook and the multiple choice question. Thank you.